5,000 men plus women and children gathered around following Christ. They were weary, they were tired, and they were hungry. A young boy gave five loaves and two fish. The disciples knew the need was greater than the resource. Jesus instructed the people to be seated. He took the little that he had, he held it up to heaven, and he gave thanks. An incredible miracle begins to happen as he breaks the bread and pass the fish. Each time they came back, after serving the multitude, there was more and more and more. You know the story. At the very end, there were 12 baskets filled and overflowing. Thankfulness begins miracles. Thankfulness, that spirit, that attitude, it seems to just unlock heaven's windows and the blessings they pour out. We don't always have things that we look and see that we are thankful for. For an example, the disciples really weren't thankful for five loaves and two fish. They really weren't thankful that 5,000 hungry, weary, frustrated followers, plus their families, were grumbling. They were hungry. In our lives, things happen that, well, they just take our breath away. A pandemic, social unrest, political discord, you may not find much to be thankful for. They close the church. They open the church. They close the church. They open the church. And once again, we're meeting in the church parking lot. You may not anticipate on Thanksgiving Day being able to gather with all of your family and all of your friends. This new protocol about six feet, only having a few people over for Thanksgiving dinner, wearing a mask in front of your own son, daughter, cousin, uncle, aunt. It seems a little ridiculous, doesn't it? Well, I know this. You may not feel like being thankful. But we begin with the story of the feeding of the 5,000 because we recognize that a grateful heart, a thankful heart, begins to open up blessing. There are many reasons why people become thankful. One reason is because God answered prayer. I was praying for something. Oh, Lord, please. God answers my prayer. And I am so thankful. We call it a testimony. There are other times when we're walking with the Lord. Life doesn't seem to be going well. Problem after problem after problem overwhelms us. Can you relate to that? I can. A series of events happen in our lives. Setbacks, discouragement, frustration. But we stay faithful. And then one day, God blesses us beyond anything we can possibly imagine. Our study today about thankfulness is going to launch us into 10 days of digging deeper in the writings and the songs of King David found in the book of Psalms in a spirit of thankfulness. Starting this Monday morning, we're going to read together a passage of Scripture, pray together a passage of Scripture about being thankful. But to get us started, 
I want to address two reasons why we might be thankful. One is God answers a, a prayer that we've asked. And the other is God blesses us unexpectedly. I'm speaking of the story of Hannah and the story of Naomi. Let's begin with the story of Hannah. 1 Samuel chapter 1. This is an amazing story and, and it illustrates how God answers prayer and His answered prayer creates a spirit of thankfulness in our heart. Hannah is going to have a son. His name will be Samuel. The book that we're reading from is named 1 Samuel, and of course there's 2 Samuel. Samuel is the one that anointed King Saul. Samuel is the one that anointed that young shepherd boy, David. This story illustrates thanksgiving because of answered prayer. Answered prayer always begins with a problem. It always begins with a struggle. It always begins with things not going well. With your Bibles, turn with me to 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse number 15. I am very discouraged, Hannah replied, and I was pouring out my heart to the Lord. Don't think I'm a wicked woman, for I have been praying out of great anguish and sorrow. The priest serving saw her and thought she was drunk because her anguish and discouragement was causing her to stumble about and not really be too coherent. She had hit the bottom rung of the ladder. She couldn't get any deeper. Her emotions ran wild. Her heart was shattered and broken, and she was crying out to the Lord. She was pouring out her heart to God. I've had prayer requests like that. I just pour my heart out to the Lord and say, Oh, Lord, oh, Lord. Our lives can become so fatigued. We can become so discouraged day after day or week after week or month after month. We don't see the answered prayer. In Hannah's life, she had become so discouraged because it wasn't days or weeks or months of prayer. It was years of prayer. She wanted to have a child. She wanted to have a son. And there she was again, pouring her heart out to the Lord. Look at it again, verse 15. I am very discouraged. I was pouring out my heart to the Lord. Thanksgiving begins with a prayer in this story. It begins by turning over my broken heart, my discouraged spirit to the Lord. Say, Lord, here I am. My heart's broken. I am overwhelmed. I'm pouring out my heart to you. I have been praying out of great anguish, she said. Well, the priest said, in that case, go in peace. May the God of Israel grant you the request you have asked. Hannah gets a miracle from God. Hannah has an answered prayer. Oh my, when God answered her prayer, we read this incredible story of such great joy and rejoicing. She's going to bring her young son back to the temple, give him back to the Lord. And here in chapter 1, verse 22, I ask the Lord to give me this boy. Anna said, and he has granted my request. He answered my prayer. Now I am giving thanks to the Lord. 
I am giving thanks. And I'm giving him back to the Lord. He will belong to the Lord his entire life. And they worship the Lord there. Thanksgiving. Remembering. Remembering that God answered prayer. Oh, look back over the last few days of your life. Look over the last few weeks or months. Look at the years that God has blessed you with. Look at the family that God has blessed you with. We have so many answered prayer. But to come back to the temple, to come back to the Lord, and to remember all that God has blessed us with, Things may not turn out the way that you had it intended, but God is still God, and God is still working, and God is still blessing. Hannah remembered. She remembered the promise she made to the Lord, and in a spirit of thanksgiving, she returned Samuel to the Lord. This story becomes the foundation of baby dedications to this very day. When a child is brought to the sanctuary and the pastor is asked to bless the child, the infant, the little baby, oftentimes the pastor will read this story, dedicating him to the Lord or her to the Lord, just like Hannah dedicated Samuel. How did this all happen? It all started with a spirit of discouragement, it all started in great anguish. It all started with pouring our hearts out to the Lord. But the Lord heard the prayer and God answered the prayer. And you know the rest of the story. God blessed her with a son, Samuel. Have you read through 2 Samuel recently? I encourage you to grab your Bible and open it up. I'm reading the New Living Translation today. I'm in 2 Samuel chapter 2, and here we have the record of the prayer of thanksgiving from Hannah. My heart rejoices in the Lord. I rejoice with a spirit of thankfulness. I am so grateful. The Lord has made me strong. Now I have an answer. God has answered my prayer. I rejoice because of the answer prayer that God has blessed me with. Oh, you may not feel thankful today. You may not feel thankful on a Sunday morning that the governor has closed 40,000 ministries. Some counties have been able to be opened. Our county just got slammed again. You can be so frustrated, so fatigued. This has gone on for nine months and we're in the parking lot again. I understand Thanks be unto God for the answers, prayers that we already have. Look around us. Look how God has provided. Look around us. Look at God's answered prayer. I want to challenge you today to sit down with your Bible, find a recliner in the living room or the sofa, lay face down on your bed and ponder all the answered prayer that God has given you. You prayed for your son, God answered the prayer. You prayed for your daughter, God answered your prayer. You prayed for your family, God heard that prayer. Don't forget, in this season of pandemic, when there's social unrest, when there's political discord, don't allow the devil to distract you. Look up. 
and say, God, you are a faithful God. You have answered our prayers. I sent a letter out this week, and starting Monday morning, I'll be moving through 10 verses, all found in different chapters in the book of Psalms, digging deeper with a spirit of thanksgiving. We'll be looking at different chapters and different verses in Psalms. Psalms chapter 9 verse 1 reads like this, I will give thanks to the Lord with all of my heart. Day 1, which we begin tomorrow, is us saying, I've decided I will be thankful. I'm not going to grumble. I'm not going to mumble. I may not be happy with things that are going on in my life, but I will be thankful. I will be grateful. I know that there are people in the world that are not grateful. They grumble and they complain and they murmur. They're critical of this and critical of that. Oh, don't bite that poison apple of anger and bitterness and unforgiveness. No, look up and say, Lord, I praise you. Study chapter 9, verse 1 of Psalms very carefully. It's an act of the will. I will give thanks. Psalms chapter 92, verse number 1. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to the Most High. I will be thankful. I will sing praises to the Lord. I love the outdoors. I see a lot of animals. I see bears, occasionally a fox, a skunk, coyote. I was up in Yellowstone where they had wolves, a moose, an elk. I've been to the zoo. I saw the hippo. I saw the giraffe. Not one of the animals I just mentioned has the ability to sing. In fact, when you stop and think about it, it seems like Birds are one of the few animals in the animal kingdom that sang. Oh, scientists have kind of played with the sound of a frog, maybe that of a bat, different animals. Oh, but they don't sing like a bird. When I walk in the springtime, I can hear all the birds. The Pacific Flyway has hundreds of thousands of birds coming from Canada, up in Washington. They're headed here for warmer weather. You can hear them sing for miles away. Oh, you sang. You sang. You are one of the few created creatures in all of God's kingdom that has the ability to sing. What are you going to do? You're going to mumble. You're going to grumble. You're going to complain. You're going to whine. And what does that do to your heart? What does that do to your spirit? Oh, lift up your voice. Look into the heavens and begin to rejoice. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Bless the Lord. I rejoice. I thank you, Lord. I don't thank you for all the problems. I don't thank you for discord. I don't thank you for unrest. I don't thank you for disease. But I thank Thank you, Father God, for the breath within my lungs. I thank you for my family. I thank you for my friends. I thank you, Lord, for your blessing upon our lives. Oh, I want to encourage you, starting tomorrow, to dig deep, 
Dig deep into God's word. Let your heart be filled with praise. Let your spirit be filled with thanksgiving. Don't allow the devil to rob you of the joy of the Lord and the blessings God has already given to you. Like David wrote in Psalms chapter 9 verse 1, I will praise him. I will thank him. Like David wrote in Psalms chapter 92, I will not only say thank you, I will sing it to the top of my ability. I'll lift up my voice and I will say thank you, Jesus. Oh, Father God, I pray for our nation and I pray for our community. I pray for every church. I pray for every heart and every home. Father, I release the power of the Holy Spirit. Baptize us in a spirit of thanksgiving. Like Hannah, we can say thank you because you've answered our prayer. Like all the apostles, we can watch Jesus say, Heavenly Father, thank you. And then watch the multitude be fed by an incredible miracle. Bless, I pray, with a spirit of thanksgiving. Now, Lord, I pray your blessing upon each and every one. Let everyone be safe. Let your face shine upon their home and heart. Let your grace go before them. Let your favor rest upon them. And within their heart, may there be peace. In Jesus' name. Remember, thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee.